Today I have nice things to say about Jim Harbaugh and all that's coming up after the bumper. Don't be cornering me. Hold up. Time. You gotta help me with that, that corner sh**. <laughs> What's up, kinfolk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always college football related, sports related. We have a good time today. I want to talk about the protest that was held outside the big house in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where, yes, the Michigan Wolverines are not playing football in September. And at a time when we were expecting to see Jim Harbaugh's Michigan Wolverines take the field and try to overcome the Ohio State Buckeyes en route to what they hoped was a Big Ten championship and a berth in the college football playoff, we have Jim Harbaugh at the big house marching. He was joined by a lot of parents and fans who are protesting the Big Ten Conference's decision to postpone slash cancel football in the fall, push it to the spring. And Larry Scott is already talking on game day about getting in Kevin Warren's ear about making sure that the Big Ten and the Pac-12 seasons link up in the spring so that they can play a Rose Bowl in May that I don't think anybody is going to be enthusiastic about. Now, I talked a little bit with Martin Warren on the RJ Young Show Saturday podcast that you can download in the link to, to, in the description below. RJ, slow down. You get tongue-tied when you are excited and you're speaking too fast. Martin Warren is the father of Darian Green Warren, who is a true freshman defensive back at Michigan and really could be one half of my favorite secondary tandem in college football. That would be Dax Hill out of Booker T. Washington just up the road from me. And, of course, Darian, uh, Darian Green Warren at corner. And Martin kind of teased me with a text talking about, yo, man, I'm waiting on a video about this. i like, I know, I got you, I got you. And one of the things that he expressed to me was how Jim Harbaugh won him over and his kid over and his family over. And, really, Darian's mom, Shantae, who you really got to win because – Martin said it himself, mamas are undefeated in recruiting, and she loved Jim Harbaugh. She loved what the University of Michigan could offer her son, and I believe that that is the biggest reason as to why I have positive things to say about Jim Harbaugh because Martin expressed to me, Jim Harbaugh wants to play football. He loves football. He's a football guy. That's what drives him. Now, he's weird. He's got idiosyncrasies that make him an easy mark with the khakis, and the busting a nut on Bo Beckler's monument, and all the rest as to how he has conducted himself in this offseason. And then we had this in the Detroit Free Press, for which I'm going to have to use the glasses because the screen's way over there. So, Penn State, uh, uh, excuse me, we had the Penn State deal yesterday and Harbaugh today in which he says he hasn't had any actual like conversation with President Slisser about the prospect of the Big Ten playing football. He says, we've texted, and Ward Manuel, who is the athletic director at Michigan, has done all the conversations with President Schlissel. According to Harbaugh, he has texted and emailed Schlissel the football team's results. He said Saturday that the program had 120 tests that were all negative and now has had close to 1,000 tests in a row that have come back negative. Harbaugh also says that Daryl Conway, that's Michigan's Senior Associate Athletic Director and Chief Health and Welfare Officer, has approved of the football program's COVID-19 protocols. And his quote was, Daryl Conway has been down to our facility multiple times, and he thinks that we're, what we're doing is a real model for everybody. That's a testament to the players and the staff, everybody following the protocols. This is also a wildly bad look for the Big Ten in particular as it's only gotten worse because earlier today did a segment about the University of Tennessee had to call off its scrimmage because they had 44 players that were out due to COVID-19. A few of them, seven to eight, well, it's actually several, seven to eight players actually contracted COVID-19. And then when you do the contact tracing and the quarantining, you have 44 players on Tennessee's football team that would not be allowed to play football. To which Jeremy Pruitt had the jokes about, glad we're not playing anybody this week, but that's how the SEC is getting down. They're going to have positive tests. They're going to play football. 
it doesn't even factor in anymore whether or not I think it's a good idea, right? And I don't. But again, if you're playing football, like I got SMU and Texas State on the screen, I'm going to watch football. And if Michigan wanted to play football, I'm going to watch them play football. What I think is wildly interesting about this is how out in front Jim Harbaugh has chosen to be in these protests and in going against his university president, which is where the buck stops, people. Like, athletic directors don't make decisions. President makes decisions. In a way that, say, Ryan Day has not actually gone up against his president. That said, he and his president want to play football. Same thing with Nebraska Chancellor Ronnie Green and Iowa's, uh, Iowa's athletic director, Iowa's president, who makes those decisions. It's really just bizarre to see a program of the stature of Michigan be at odds in this way while they also are having kids on campus, right? Like one of the things that was a lasting image for me in doing my research to do this segment is the photo of Jim Harbaugh walking hand in hand with his daughter as everyone is protesting and marching around the big house. Like they got masks on and they got signs out and some of them so sh say, show me the data. Some of them say, go blue. But you can see that everybody seems to be the same level of upset when we're talking about this stuff. I don't think that the protests are going to change anything any more than I think that we're going to see Big Ten football in the spring. I mean, right now it's all craps, right? And we're coming up snake eyes. And I'm going to really stop stressing that metaphor because the gambling thing just ain't my bag when it comes to that thing. Though I am... 2-0 and so far with picks. We'll see how I do with this UNT thing and this FFA thing, but we'll see. I feel for Michigan parents most of all because they want to see their kids play football. They also want their kids to be safe. And while we could say that we feel like the kids are going to be safer on college campuses or in their football bubbles, Tennessee is proving that that's not necessarily true. Even as Alabama has nearly 500 over the past week of positive test cases, they haven't reported any for their football team, right? And the same thing you could say around the country, like LSU had to quarantine its entire offensive line for a period of time. I think it's going to be really difficult down there. The Big 12 came out with a rule saying that you have to have 53 players that test negative before the game to play the game. Otherwise, you have to cancel the game, which is another way of saying that the SEC's Tennessee wouldn't be allowed to play in the Big 12. Add to that, we already had SMU and Texas Christian called off because Texas Christian is a Petri dish in which they had enough players that they couldn't even scrimmage themselves, and SMU is already on TV playing football on ESPN. It's just a bad look for the Power 5 programs, and it's an even worse look for the Big 10 because while I think that the Big 10 is, would have its cluster and we would have a cluster, you know, that word, on our hands if enough of those players weren't able to play. There are so many people that are just committed to trying to do this anyway that they would play football. And now, what are you actually going to be able to salvage from this other than what I think is the worthwhile thing, which is humanity, right? That's what I'm here for. You're also not going to look good when you look at the balance sheet and you saw that you don't recover any of that billion dollars that you make for putting football on television in the Big Ten Conference. It's not going to be easy for anyone, but to be stupidly simplistic about it is also the wrong way to go. Good luck to the Big Ten and all Big Ten fans. I understand how much this sucks because we were all in quarantine together, and I understand what it must feel like for you to watch other teams get to play but not your team in this very regional sport where I get more people just telling me to talk about their teams than actually want to talk about college football. So I understand. All right. That's it for me. Doses.